Good morning out here and good morning out there. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That is his instruction to us. And to be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God, according to the Lord. So we'll start with a prayer. And actually, even before that, I'll make a little correction to last week's message. I spontaneously told the story about Daniel in the lion's den, and I wasn't sure, but I said I thought it was King Nebuchadnezzar. No, later I remembered it was King Darius. Nebuchadnezzar is in the book of Daniel, but not for that particular story. Uh, <laughs> so let's pray. Heavenly Father, yes, open our ears to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. That's the message we want to bring, messages from your word and the living God, and not just opinions. We want the living word. So bless each one that hears and anoint my lips to speak only what you want me to. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, we're going to talk about fear not. <laughs> I think this is the week, this is the week to talk about this because a lot of people are in fear after the election and in fear or rejoicing, depending on which, which side you're on. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, now, I read that fear not is in the Bible 365 times. But then, evidently, some skeptics tried to look it up, and they said, no, it's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's in there. Most, it is the most repeated commandment. And it also comes in other phrases, like, do not be afraid, and, you know, fear not, and be strong and courageous. And so I'm sure there's probably more than 365 if you take all those together. But... In any case, someone came up with that number, and it was very interesting because that means every day of the year we have a promise. And praise God, and it's just that reassurance. So we'll look at some of the scriptures. This is a time that many are fearful as our government goes through a transition. And here's what I'm praying, that in spite of the fears, anxiety, and unrest, in our country, that peace like a blanket will spread over our nation, especially the peace that passes all understanding that only comes from our Heavenly Father. I speak peace to our nation in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to look at some scriptures. John 14, 27 is what, uh, when Jesus left, John 14, 27, he said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, 20, verse 28. I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. So, and then in the King James, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard now how I said unto you, I go away and come again to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Praise the Lord. And <clears throat> what does he tell us in Philippians 4, 6 through 8? This is very important at this time. Don't worry about anything. 
And in King James, it says, be careful for nothing, or be anxious for nothing. But instead, pray about everything. Tell God, tell God what you need, and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So that is, that will help us a lot. If you find your mind gravitating only to the bad news of the day or troubles in your life or circumstances, it's going to weigh you down and it's going to get you down. Instead, we have to shift gears. We have to like change a channel and look to the positive things, the good things, the lovely things, whatever that might be in your life. And even the word of God, of course, to turn our mind to the promises that he gives us. And not just our own thoughts and others' opinions and circumstances which can cause a lot of anxiety. It also says in Isaiah 26.3 that uh, he will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he steadfastly seeks you. So it's a, a follow-up of that, that we have to make that choice. And again, in Philippians 4.4, 4, you know, always be full of joy in the Lord, or rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. And it goes on, don't worry about anything. So, Speaking back about how many times uh, fear not or be not afraid is in the Bible, uh, the question would be, well, how many times does God have to say it? <laughs> I think he said, let there be light, and there was light. <laughs> Whatever he said, boom, it happened. So it still is the most repeated command. And one of my favorites is Joshua 1.9, which uh, we'll go back to that. Uh, let's see. Joshua 1 9. Of course, the pages won't part. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay. This is my command be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And just before that, he talks about study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So, uh, and this is his command. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Or discouraged, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Praise God. We have to remember that. We have to remember that. Isaiah 41.10. Another wonderful promise. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And verse 13. For I hold you by your right hand. I, the Lord, your God. And I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Thank you, Lord. And we'll skip over to 40, Isaiah 43. 
1 through 3. But now, Jacob, or we can say now, we can just say, O believers, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. People are going through deep waters, aren't they, with the storms. 44, it said they, uh, the storm put down 44 million gallons of water, I think they estimated, you know, in the storm. So that was pretty fast and devastating. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. We'll stop there. And uh, such promises, such promises. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy 31.6. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And there again, what does the Lord say? He will never leave us or forsake us. So, you know, sometimes you feel like he's left you. And it's just, it's feelings. But see, we can't, that's why we can't always just go by our feelings. We have to go by his word, which says he will never leave us or forsake us. And he loves us with an everlasting love. So at times like that, just hang on to that word. Because that, it says heaven and earth will pass away but my word will never pass away. So this word is alive, it's alive. Amen. Praise you, Lord. And Psalm 46, I let, we'll read Psalm 46. It's an excellent one. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. In verse 10, especially, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you have to quiet your mind and your heart. And like, like he says with that prayer, don't, if you have the anxiety or the worry to bring it to the Lord, with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and he will guard your hearts and your minds with the peace that passes all understanding. And First Peter 5, 7, I believe, you know, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. And see, it's the same God. The God of Israel 
Israel was the chosen nation to bring forth the Messiah into the earth, and we believe Jesus Christ is that Messiah. Read Isaiah 53. And so it's when it says that, we still can know it's for us. It's for us. And a, <clears throat> excuse me, very beloved psalm is, of course, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm going to read it in King James because... Everybody knows it that way. <laughs> he, I think it was the first scripture my mother taught us when we were little kids. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very comforting psalm. Psalm 118, 6. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Once again, to keep the perspective. Praise you, Lord. And it's uh, repeated in Luke well, let's see, while I'm still in Psalms, we'll look at another Psalm. Uh, psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And this world is temporary. It's the things that are unseen that are in eternal. Yeah, and it goes on in verse 4. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? So uh, we have, need that reminder continuously. And in New Testament, if God is for us, who can be against us? Praise God. And Luke 1232, let's have a look at that. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. And in 127, He says, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Because it says he even knows when the sparrow falls from the sky. So if he cares about the sparrows, how much more does he care for you? We can be assured of that. Praise you, Lord. And I have one last reference here. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I didn't mark it, so we'll see if I can get to it. Because uh, it's not one of the more common books. I might have to look it up. Haggai. Haggai 2.5. Let's see. Well, I will probably have to look it up. So otherwise, <laughs> it will elude me. Okay, page 1450 for whoever's interested. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> That's the one thing Bible 
Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, almost there. Hey, guy, two, five. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid. So, so many times. And once again, for those who want to pursue more study, you know, you will find so many times, you know, do not be afraid. Fear not. I believe the angel said to Mary, because face it, to have an encounter with a supernatural angel can be a frightening thing. Most people fell on their face or trembled and quaked because the supernatural being who is more power and love than we see on this earth, it can be frightening. But he said, fear not, you know, fear not. God is with you. So I guess that's what I'm going to speak to you today. Fear not. God is with you. And he said he would be with us to the ends of the earth as we go forth, preach the gospel to the nations, make disciples. We want his kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a different place, what a different world this would be if every believer lived that way in total obedience to the Lord. It's not easy. Our flesh is within us. We have our old nature and we have the new nature. When we receive Jesus in our heart, we receive a new nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but there's a battle within you know, our flesh, we still basically are self-centered and sometimes selfish people. <laughs> and we have to overcome it. You know, we have to overcome it. When, uh, when God asks you to do something or give something up because he's asking you to, because it's the best thing for your life, not always easy to do. Uh, one time I really had a struggle. Excuse me. Giving something up <clears throat> that he wanted me to and really had a struggle. And then I heard in my ear, I gave everything for you. <laughs> okay, Lord, <laughs> you win. <laughs> That's right, you did. So <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So <clears throat> I'm going to pray while I still have a voice, and we'll close. Once again, I speak peace to your heart and peace to this nation who's just gone through this tremendous transition. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control. Bottom line, Psalm 11, you are in. You're still in control. We look to you. We look to you. I pray for our leaders of our nation that they would look to you. That they would get divine instruction. Believe it or not, the people that began this country did that. So we pray they'll seek your face. You're alive and well, and you can be found. When people seek you, you can be found. So we thank you for that. I speak peace to this nation, peace to your heart. Peace, be still. God is with you. And be still and know that I am God. And he loves you. And he loves us. He loves you. So be blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs>